How's it going? Thought I'd do an aquaponic update. Did a one for the garden the other day, so start up here with the fish. The fish are taking it pretty easy. They've turned into some pretty cruisy fish. The water temperature's dropped to about 21 degrees here, so I think that's got a lot to do with it. As the water temperature drops, uh, their activity slows down. It's really noticeable when they feed. When they feed, they're pretty much all just it's rather funny actually, there's one or two of them that just stay at the surface and eat their way through a, a little floating raft of food. Uh, a few of the others hit it pretty hard still and then swim down the bottom, but they've just overall mellowed out a fair bit over the last week or two. I think taking the airstone out of the back corner has also done a lot to calm them out, calm them down a bit. Um, they seem fairly much okay with me hovering over the gap here. If I was to open the lid, I don't think they'd appreciate it too much. It gets a bit too bright too quickly for them, but yeah, they seem to be travelling all right. The airstone is now over in the back corner of the sump tank, so it's bubbling away furiously down there and oxygenating the water there, going up through the feed line and coming down through here. And yeah, that waterfall is also oxygenating the water as well again, so I'm not worried about the fish not having oxygen in the tank or dissolved oxygen in the tank itself. It's happening somewhere else and being transported there. I will point out though, if we do go away for any length of time, what I'll do is I've got some other stones and it's just a matter of putting in another pipe down the back there and having an air stone in the actual tank itself. That way, if the pump fails but the power still stays on, there's still oxygen going into the tank. So that's just a little bit of a redundancy I haven't built in yet, but I will be doing before it's needed. I've been doing a bit of maintenance yesterday afternoon and today on the system. I just cleaned out the radial flow filter yesterday afternoon. We're having a bit of a flow rate issue with it. Not enough water's going through it. So I'm actually going to re-plumb it and put it into the line, swing that around and do a bit of fancy pipe work and put that into the line there that feeds the grow beds. What happens is, or what's happening, is the velocity of water that's flowing through here and then up through the standpipe in the centre isn't pushing the solids that have settled out down the bottom here. So I got in there yesterday and I cleaned all the muck out from down the bottom and then I filled up the filter again slowly by holding my hand over the top of the inflow pipe in the filter, letting the water level in the fish tank rise and then taking my hand away and all the solids were then being out that were trapped down the bottom there. So actually got a fair bit of solids out of it that way. The water that was collected, I'll just show it to you quickly. That bucket there, that bucket there, and that container there were from the second flushing when I was flushing out that line down the bottom. These three buckets here were from the initial uh, cleaning out of the filter. I don't know if it's going to work. That grass was thrown in after. I don't know if it's going to work, but if you disturb the bottom, you'll see a whole heap of bubbles come up to the surface. So what that is, that's the anaerobic activity in the solids down the bottom there, and it's producing gas that can be toxic to the fish. So that's pretty much all why it's a good idea to clean this sort of stuff out of your filter uh, weekly. I have let it slip and let it go a little bit longer, but I'm pretty much will do it every Saturday now. Yesterday was Thursday, but we won't worry about that. We did have uh, the problem with the nitride in the system. Uh, there's a clip up there if you want to suss it out. We did have a spike because of a few different bed issues, but that's all sorted now. All the um, um, ammonia is down to 0.25, uh, nitrite's down to trace, so I'm really happy with the way the system's traveling at the moment. Uh, the pH in the system is actually drastically low. It's, I tested it just before. The water temperature's just under 21 degrees and the pH was 6.5. So I topped up from that tank over there yesterday. pH in there from the tap is 8.3. Put about three, 400 liters through into here and it was looking at about 7.1 when I went um, back up to the house yesterday afternoon so I thought yeah it had raised it up a bit that's after I'd given it some time for the water to circulate through came down this morning yeah it's back down to about um, 6.4 6.5 ish so there is a definite problem when your pH drops that low what happens is you can end up with a bacteria crash so I've just mixed up some hydrated lime here it's starting to settle out a bit but once I finish filming, I'll be putting that through the grow beds. There's pro approximately four litres or a gallon of water in there to a quarter of a cup of hydrated lime. The water's come from the si uh, system. I actually drew it out of the filter there just to mix up the lime. And I'll just pour that in under where the water feeds into the grow bed. So 
I'll monitor that and this afternoon, actually it'll probably be tomorrow morning, I'll do another pH test and if it's still down, which it will be because this only brings it up in small, very small increments, I'll add another a quarter of a cup. What I'm aiming for is I want the pH to be around about 6.9 to 7.1. Um, the grow beds themselves, they're looking rather lush. Um, the plants over here didn't suffer too much from the big clean out. I did lose uh, capsicum over there and two or three small Egyptian spinach plants, but yeah, you get that. Some more were transplanted over here. I have an Egyptian spinach down in there. The other plants in here seem to do all right. The strawberries are really liking it in here. So is the celery. We're progressively harvesting this celery in here. There's actually four through the whole system. Kang Kong's loving it. Uh, planted some watermelon radish over there. There's a little stand of Detroit beetroot in front of that uh, flat leaf parsley. And over there I've got some yellow beets, uh, yellow beetroot. So that bed there is traveling along nicely. I've got my little filter pads under there now just to collect the small solids that come through. Should probably clean them out by the look of them. Oh, that's another thing. I put the wrong standpipe back into the bell system, um, the bell siphon, when after I cleaned out the bed. And I ended up with the water coming too close to the surface of the clay balls. So I ended up with a bit of an algae growth on there. So I realized what had happened yesterday afternoon and I've put the original standpipe back in there. So now the water comes into about um, 300 mils, or I think what's that, about an inch and a quarter from the, the lowest point of the clay ball. So that should stop any of that algae growing up in there. Uh, as for the other plants in this bed, that Thai basil's been cut back so many times. This celery is being harvested. These carrots have just gone humongous in here. Kangkong has gone crazy. It's grown up the, over the top of that basil and there's more growing out of the grow bed there. It's actually an invasive species, so I'm going to have to start munching into that stuff. We don't want it in the Bremen River waterway. It's already a weed, declared weed, in a few waterways. I think the Logan River's one, and I think in some states in America, it's actually a declared weed over there. I think Texas was one. Uh, this basil was throwing little seeds down, so we're getting new little basils popping up. Come around the back here. This cancong's just massive, so it grows all the way down here. There's flowering as well, which is not good because we definitely don't want any birds taking the seeds away, so I'm going to be very careful on that and keep an eye on that. Water chestnuts, uh, while they're not doing as well as the constant flow bed, or the constant filter bed as I now call it, that was sitting just there, they are doing okay. So next year I'll try and work out a bit of a better way to grow them in the aquaponics, and so we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, so that's just a bit of a look at the seedlings. I suppose that's pretty much all it. Um, so check out those other videos, the, the cleaning of the, the grow bed. It was a lot less painful than having to shovel the media out. Did go through a fair bit of water, but yeah, with the wicking beds, not a problem at all. All the spare water went into the rest of the gardens to fill up the reservoirs. So that's pretty much all it as far as aquaponic update goes. Sorry for rabbiting on about a few different things there. Hope it all makes sense by the time I edit it all. The other thing, yes, this weekend I'm going to a how to build a fish farm, backyard fish farm in an afternoon. It's being put on by Earthen Group at a local community garden, so that's something I'm definitely interested in. I uh, wouldn't mind trying to just raise some fish by themselves without the aquaponics side of it, the growing the veggies, so that'll be an interesting afternoon. There might be a few additions to the garden in that respect in the coming months. We'll just see what happens, what works out. Uh, what else? The radial flow filter. Hopefully I'll get stuck into that this weekend if I can find some time. And yeah, I suppose that's pretty much all it. Any comments, questions, suggestions, just drop them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Other than that, I hope you all have a great one and take it easy. Gotcha!